Okay, so the last section of this um, third and final email of the LinkedIn um, email course I put together is they're kind of miscellaneous questions that just really, I, I couldn't find spots for them, so I kind of put them in this segment called miscellaneous. So on to the first question. So the first question in this miscellaneous section is, my biggest struggle with LinkedIn is that many connections aren't real connections. That is, when I ask for an introduction, people don't really know the person I'm trying to contact. <coughs> so this is from uh, Jeff P. And I get it. Um, you know, part of the process that I leverage is I try to figure out where I have connections that can leverage me into second level uh, connections on LinkedIn. And, um, you know, the, a lot of times I'll come back and say, I just don't know this person. I'm connected with them somehow on LinkedIn, but I just don't know them or anything like that. So, I mean, it's inevitable, right? But the more connections you get on LinkedIn, the more you're going to have the ability to build those connections into these different people on LinkedIn. So uh, my answer to this one is, you know, there's not much that you could do if the people that you're connected to don't really know the people that you're trying to reach out to. But this brings up a big point, which is my feeling is when you come in contact with people, so this could be people that you're personally friends with, uh, people that um, you know, you've know uh, met through business, through networking, a whole bunch of different things. One of the first things you should do, and I always do this, is I look to see if they're on LinkedIn. Then I reach out to them and connect with them on LinkedIn. Because as you grow your network, what you're going to find is that <clears throat> you know you may know you may be trying to get in to see one person, you have five connections. Of those five connections, first of all, those connections aren't strong enough with you to be able to get you into the door. Um, but secondly, those guys may not have strong connections with that person. So the more connections that you have that are first level that might be connected could get you in the door. So part of that is I'm, I'm you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at the second aspect that I talked to about this, which is I don't have necessarily enough connections on LinkedIn to, to reach out. So one of the things that I talk about is in uh, with your connections is you need to be st building stronger relationships with your connections. So one of the things you can do is grade your LinkedIn connection. So I talked about how you can download your um, uh, connections from LinkedIn into an Excel spreadsheet and then you can grade them from there. Now what I do is oftentimes I will grade them depending on certain levels, A, B, C, and D. So A people get my most attention. Those are the people that I'm trying to build stronger relationships on a consistent basis. B uh, are people that, you know, obviously not as important at A as A, but I want to get their attention. I want to try to move them. I want to get them from a B up until an A. C are people that I'm, you know, I want to get attention, try to move them to a B or even move them into an A position. So I want to strengthen those relationships. And D are just ones that I really don't have much use for, but I'm connected with on LinkedIn. Um, and they just, I just don't do anything with them as well. And then typically what I do is once I've graded these people, I import them into my Contactually CRM, which I use religiously every day to keep in contact with people. So once I import these LinkedIn connections, what you do is you set up buckets and buckets are for like A bucket, B bucket, C bucket, D bucket, or A list, B list, C list, D list. And when you set these buckets up, you also, sorry, you also put specific time frames that you want to follow up with these people. So for example, all my A's, I want to be following up with them every 30 days or less. So the nice thing about Contactually is when I put someone in, I put them in an A bucket, Daily, it reminds me and says, hey, you need to follow up with this person. It's been 30 days since you connected with them. Um, if I don't necessarily want to follow with them, up with them that day, I can snooze them for a day, seven days, 21 days, or 90 days, or I can snooze them all together. Um, but the fact is, it's contactually is reminding me to keep in touch with these people. You know, B buckets, uh, the B bucket, if you want, is you can um, literally put kind of every 30 to 60 days. I'd put it closer to 60 days for a follow up because you're trying to you know, move these people more to those, those A connections. And C, you know, every 60 to 90 days, you wanna be following up with them as well. Um, the other thing you need to understand is that um, you know, your Cs and Bs, not all of them are gonna end up in As. They may end up being in that B bucket and they may end up going off to the wayside and never being followed up with. So anyways, 
that's part of a follow-up process, building stronger relationships. Hopefully you get yourself in the door so that you'll be able to, um, uh, you know, get more introductions and get more stuff going. So the other thing too, is that I just wanted to show you as it relates to Contactually, when you go into the Contactually dashboard, this is where they just basically have uh, the follow-up mechanism that's in place that you can, uh, they dumb it right down for you and say, here's the people you need to follow up with on a daily basis. So for example, that first person, Stephen Harris, when I put follow-up, um, it'll bring up a email segment like this. And this is where I can email Stephen and, uh, and keep in touch with him on a consistent basis.